All right, everyone. Um, happy Saturday. So we're going to be going over TradingView today, and I wanted to just do it for uh, start fresh and like show you guys how to make an account uh, because making an account with them, it's free and it opens up a ton of uh, you know better features, and it's all free. So I'm just going to go Trading View, right? Just Google Trading View. It's going to be TradingView.com. You can also enter that there, but just to make sure you get the the right one, um, and you're just going to go join for free. Uh, it's going to take it's going to take you two seconds. Just log in with your Facebook. Continue with Ben. And that's fine. We don't need to add a photo. But yeah, just creating an account is going to like help you do a, a ton more stuff. As, like, and most importantly, add like things to your watch list because it won't let you do that unless, um, unless you have an account, right? So what we're going to do, guys, if you want to search for a ticker, the best place to do that is right here. So just go SPY. Search for the ticker, and we're gonna get SPY's chart. Uh, you can hit the full feature chart, and it's gonna open a new tab. Um, depends, you know, how you really want to do this. But if you want candles, and I suggest that you do uh, use candles, then um, yes, I know. Then I, you just open the full feature chart, go over here, and then this is gonna be your like your desktop, like you're using uh, Thinkorswim. It's gonna have pretty much all the same stuff, a little more, a few more features um, that are pretty cool. And yeah, let's actually just go through this. So you can build your watch list here. So we want to put on like Snap and stuff. We want to put on like our our go-tos, JNUG. If you want to take something off, just hit the X here. Um, I'm going to take most of these off. I don't trade Forex, so let's take all these pairs off, right? Um, oops, I know we want SPY in there. We want Snap. Um, there we go. So then we'll just do like JDST and the focus of the video is not to build the watch list with you guys. Um, the focus of the video is to teach you guys functionality of this. Uh, and yeah, I really sat down and learned this thing, um, today and yesterday. So I know I told you guys I would make the video yesterday, yesterday, but I wanted to take a little bit more time to actually, um, go through it and make sure that I know it so I can relay it to you. All right. So first thing you're going to notice, hide for now, if that ever pops up, just hit hide for now. Um, First thing you're, you guys are going to notice is on this right panel, you're going to have details and you're going to get the day's range here, right? So that means that um, in the last day, this is the full range of um, of where the stock has been, right? So the lowest here, um, and we're actually on NDX, let's just make sure we're on something like SPY. Um, so this is the entire day candle that you're seeing, right? So we opened here, which it doesn't tell you the exact price, and we closed here. So just make believe that this is like rotated 90 degrees. This is the lower shadow and this is the upper shadow. So the lowest that it got today was 275.47, right? And we can see from that day candle that the lowest was 275.47, right? And then the, the vector for where it was in the beginning of the day versus the end of the day was here to here. So it doesn't tell you the exact, um, the exact change, but it is it is related to you to here. So four dollars and seventeen cents change. We're at two seventy eight twenty, which is you know where the ticker is here, and here we are at uh, two eighty one twenty, which is the upper shadow, right? Same thing. It gives you a fifty two week range, and it tells you the low, the high, and uh, you know the change, um, and then it's, it. it I don't know. I don't really trust this buy sell technical analysis thing. It's going to do some very basic text for you and it's going to give you a buy sell recommendation. I would take that with a grain of salt and realize that this is a computer that, you know, if this thing was historically right, everyone would be flocking to use this. And I, you know, it's just, a, it's just a recommendation. It's nothing, it's nothing solid. You can follow it. You don't have to follow it, but it is made using a computer. It's not, you know, it's not someone that's sitting behind these saying, sure, buy, right? Um, you can see it's a moderately strong buy at this point. Uh, middle is neutral, strong sell, or sorry, moderately strong sell, strong sell, and then obviously strong buy here. Um, I think this is all of the, you know, factors contrib are con contributing to one recommendation. Anyway, we uh, get the volume, the open price, average volume, you know, all that all that st uh, good stuff that, um, you know, you can get on Thinkorswim as well. So the next thing, guys, is the chart is very easy to, to, um, to navigate, right? So right now I'm scrolling up with two fingers on the trackpad, and right now I'm scrolling down with two fingers on the trackpad. That's something that Thinkorswim doesn't allow you to do is to, ma uh, to manipulate the chart just by scrolling. I think it's a very cool feature. However, just like Thinkorswim, the second you screw with the y-axis, right, it's no longer going to you know, it's no longer going to auto set to the top and bottom. So 
and double clicking doesn't actually fix that. We have to just go back to the, um, I think, you know, the only way around this I've found is to switch charts and go back. So if we're on the one day here, you know, this is going to auto, oh no, it's not actually, yeah, you got to hit the auto here actually. So, you know, once you scroll and you have auto on, then it's going to auto fill the, the lowest to the lowest part of the chart and the high to the highest part of the chart. The second auto gets turned off and you scroll, you know, you're going to get stuck um, with warped windows. So I recommend trying to keep auto on as much as possible. Um, you, you can do log chart if you really want. I don't see any real merit to doing that unless you're looking at like Bitcoin or something. Um, percentage, you can do that as well. Uh, so it shows you, you know, the percentage. This is a really cool feature that uh, TD Ameritrade doesn't have. So if you turn on this percent, it's going to snap the 0% to the first candle that you have in your frame, right? So the 0% is going to move. So if you want to say measure the percent change and plot that on the chart from January 1st, right? So we can scroll all the way to January 1st and have, whoops, let's see, just <laughs> bear with me guys. So we can move to the 2020 here, right? And put January 1st as the first thing here. We got our 0% mark here, right? And then we found out that we're plus 4.48% at the high, minus 32.7% at the low, right? And now we're sitting at about 14.37%. So that's a really good thing to do if you're looking for a potential return that you may get, uh, or if you're looking for overall change, um, very useful tool. But you know, personally, I like to keep it on the, uh, just on the numbers um, for, for, you know, my pre preliminary analysis. If you want to pop this chart out, let's go here, right? It'll make it a full screen chart, something that, whoops, are we frozen? Are we frozen? All right, so we're back. Um, damn, now I'm gonna have to throw this in Premiere and chop it up. Anyway, whatever. Uh, let's just, so to, to do this, you're just gonna hit escape or I don't know if there's an escape button on the chart, but yeah. So now guys, let's navigate this side panel here. So there's a few useful tools, a few tools that I still am kind of wondering about, like this guy right here. I don't know if this is a Forex thing, but I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. If one, if one of you guys knows what this is, I would love to hear it because <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my life. If you want to delete something, just make sure it's like something ridiculous, like something you'd never draw like this. Just make sure it's selected. Whoops. Make sure like these, these things are popping up and just hit the delete key and it'll go away. Um, sometimes it doesn't work on Thinkorswim, but it does work on this. You can also do the control Z right? Control Z. I'm hitting this right now. And that's, that's going to get us to delete our things. All right. So we'll go top to bottom. So here we have little things that you could just, you know, um, have your cursor be. So if you choose the dot, that's your cursor. If you choose, um, the arrow, you can, you know, move your arrow around. I don't know why you would care, but if you want to do the cross, it will, it will auto align, um, vertically and horizontally, like you have in thinkorswim. Um, you can always click and hold down to drag the chart something you can't do in thinkorswim um, in addition to scrolling up and down right that'll move the chart and you can use these sideways arrows to scroll as well um, on the x and the y um, if you're on percent it's not going to work on the y but you know it, it will work here and then just hit auto to redo it so the equivalent to um, double clicking on thinkorswim to make it pop back to auto you just come down here and hit that i know we already went over that but that's okay so Let's go over uh, drawing our lines here. So we have our simple line, right? And obviously you can click this and it, you can draw a point A to point B. But if you want to get a little bit more in depth, you can do a trend line, which is what I just did. You can do an info line, which lets you like measure uh, percentage, number change. Uh, I think it goes, yeah, percentage, number change, and then uh, horizontal change as well, um, as well as the angle. I don't know why you would need to know the angle. Uh, I don't know, slope, rise, overrun, whatever you want to do with that. But it tells you what it is. I know Thinkorswim has a similar tool, but you can do that. And then that box is going to stay there. Pretty cool. I think it's pretty clean the way they do it. Um, however, we'll take that out. Whoops. Let's take it out. Um, just click on it, hit the delete key, 
and you'll be able to um, get rid of that. And so the, the most recent one you use is gonna uh, pop up as the default tool on this, um, on the panel here. So if I wanted to do like a trend angle, which is literally the same thing as what we just went over, except just this tool, right? Now, from now on, when I click this, it's gonna give me the angle tool, right? So we'll, we'll go down the list. Um, you wanna do a horizontal line. I know Thinkorswim lets you do this, so it'll just literally snap to the horizontal place where you click. In Thinkorswim, you have to click twice. This one, you only have to click once, and then you can drag it up and down. You know, it's not gonna twist on you. It's never gonna be not a horizontal line. So that's pretty useful, I believe. Uh, get rid of that, and then it's gonna pop up there. You can do a vertical line, just like uh, Thinkorswim, just click once, you can move it. That's good for, you know, plotting out expiration dates. You can do uh, a cross, which is both vertical and horizontal. You can do an arrow, you can do a ray if you're into geometry, uh, and then regression trend, this is another useful one. So you just click once, um, and I believe you click twice onto the thing, and it's gonna auto snap for you, right? It's gonna show you pretty much the high, low, and the median line for the range of data that you selected. Um, we'll do another one just to show you. And there's another really cool tool that we'll get to in a minute, but click once, click twice, and it's gonna show you the uh, just the, the overall regression, right? Get rid of those. Oh, so Control Z also takes into into account you know chart manipulation. So if the last move that you did was moving the chart, it'll undo that before it undoes any draw undoes any drawings, right? Here, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of these things. Um, you can draw like little patterns and stuff. I never have used these. Uh, if you want to do a Fibonacci channel, like that's that's one thing, um, and then it'll let you. I never have been a fan of this study, but you can use it if you want. We don't go over it in the course and it's because I don't use it, but you can do that if you want. I feel like all of these are superfluous to any, um, you know, to all necessary things, but whatever you want to do. And then you have simple polygons here. So you can t grab your brush and start drawing or whatever. If you want to mark up like, uh, I don't know, it's there if you need it. Uh, you could do a, a simple rectangle, right? If you want to, sometimes we like to draw our supports and resistances in ranges. That would be this equivalent, right? So if you wanted to do something like this and plot in like, hey, we got a resistance here, but you wanted to make it a range instead of just drawing the line, that's when that would come into play. Uh, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. Uh, you can also change the color of it. Um, just click on it and then you can change all this stuff about it. Change the fill, change the border change the, you can know, send it to back and front. It's literally like like doing something in Canva. You can do all those things with it, something you can't really do on um, Thinkorswim. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, you do rotate a rectangle ellipse. Um, for the ellipse, you're gonna click three times, once to start the, lip, the ellipse, the second time to get the opposite side, and then the third time is to widen it, right? So just like that, you can play around with that, get used to it. But um, yeah, you can add some text. If you want to do like a little call out, make some notes on the chart, um, that's great. And and the good thing about this, guys, is if this is all cloud-based, right? So it's all internet-based. So if you want to log into your TradingView account from any computer, you're, you're able to do that rather than logging into TD Ameritrade or having to download TD Ameritrade and then only having access on the devices that you downloaded it on. Um, also, also something that, um, you know, a little, a little bit useful. Um, yeah, just like, I, I'm sure we don't have to go over every single one, but you can do like low or low or, or something like that, right? And then it'll, it'll just pop in there, right? That's the text tool. This one, I really, I really don't know what these are. If you want to, if you know how to use those, awesome. If not, I really wouldn't worry about it. Let's take this out, take this out. Then uh, moving on to one of my favorite tools here. So this is, you can like back test stuff. Um, so if you were to like, uh, I don't know, like, set your set your position so let's see so say we were okay let's let's just pick this again so what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on like where you would open your position and where you would close your position so you can drag uh your your stop loss or your take profit right it's gonna tell you where it's gonna tell you where your stop loss or take profit would have um would have executed right so you're gonna click the first time you click is gonna be where you would open your position and then you can drag the upper line to where you would have your take profit, right? So if my take profit was, uh, let's just call it like, you know what? I'm gonna do this on a different scale because it's gonna be easier. So we'll do like the, the one minute 
chart for today or for Friday. It's Thursday. We didn't trade on Friday. That's why I lost two grand. That's right. So let's see. Um, so, all right. So say you identified support here. This will, we'll do a real life example here. You identified a lot of support here. You're like, all right, sweet. Let's, let's take a position or whatever. And you bought in right here. So you're going to click where you bought in, right? And it's going to set some defaults. Um, and then you can just back test whatever you would think. So let's say you set your stop loss, you know, right below where, uh, where that support line was and you set your take profit, let's say like right at the former resistance here. And then the third thing you can drag out is the length of time you're willing to hold this position for, right? So it tells you, you close, you would have closed this position at 2.09, uh, difference, right? Um, risk reward ratio is 2.1. So that means, um, uh, you're, you're, uh, let's see. Yeah. So your, your take profit is 2.18 times the, uh, the height of your stop loss. I, I believe they have that reversed. So it should be reward risk ratio reward over risk, but I don't, I don't think it really matters as long as you, you know, it's positive, right? Your stop loss is negative 0.35%. It tells you exact percentages, amounts, and, um, you know, depending on how many shares you buy, uh, quantity 260. I, I don't know where you actually change that. I, I didn't look into that, but I'm sure you could change it. Let's see. Yeah, so it just assumes you bought 260 and you would have lost 750 if it stopped out and you would have gained 1543 if you hit your take profit, right? And it's it's awesome, right? So you can back test stuff. You can literally drag this uh, I mean, you would buy there, but like you could drag this anywhere on the chart and you can see if your risk reward ratio would have benefited you or if you would have stopped out, right? So you would have stopped out here and it tells you, it says closed PL negative 0.96. Um, you lost 750 uh, on this, in this case, you gained 1543. If you would have uh, taken the take profit, right? And then let's say you let it go a little bit more. You just kind of let it go all day and you don't care how long it takes, right? So your your win here would be 1828, your loss would be 751. So it's a really good way, if you're trying to analyze your trades, throw one of these in and do an analysis of, okay, where was my stop loss? Assuming that you adhere to your plan, right? So if you don't adhere to your plan and your emotions take over, then this will not be useful. But I think it is pretty useful um, if you, you know, are sticking to your plan. You can see, hey, did my plan work? You closed your PL was 5.6. Risk reward was uh, 10 to 3, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, you can do it on a short position as well. So, if, if exact same thing, so you would just open. So, let's just say you're shorting here, right? And your, your stop loss would be on the upside, right? That's why it's red. And your take profit would be down here. So, you'd say you'd gain 2124 if you were to buy 595 shares. Uh, your risk reward ratio is nine to two and uh, your your upper bound, so your stop loss was 0.1%, your, your take profit was 0.69%. Uh, Obviously, you know, different people have different strategies here and sometimes you would stop out, sometimes you would you would take profit, but it's a good way to back test or even forward test your strategies, um, right? You can, you can draw this box in going forward, right? So if I were to just open a long position and I wanted to open it right now, right? You could just be like, all right, so literally I'm setting my, my take profit to half a percent, make it 0 0.50, right? My stop loss is gonna be at a quarter percent. Whoops, let's, and at, let's say I, I give it the time limit to uh, crunch it up a little bit to the end of the day. I don't know when the, this thinks the end of the day is, but right. And then you can see as the stock goes, right? Is it going to hit your take profit or is it going to stop out? Obviously, it thinks it thinks that it's stopping. Actually, no. So it actually highlights the current position as well. So if you don't stop out or or take profit, right? If your position would still be open, so say say we had it like here, it will tell you it's open. This it's still open, and your profit loss is this, right? Really cool tool. Last thing, guys, uh, if we have the arrows, you could draw a little shapey guys in here or whatever you want. And then this one's the real one uh, that I was asking, actually asking you guys about measuring. So you can measure um, percentage with this pretty easily. Uh, let's just do it. Let's zoom in a bit. So you can measure, say, hey, I want to measure bottom to top percentage. Just get the percent tool, click on it, click on it, and it'll tell you that's, that's 1.2%. 
Uh, I took 39 minutes, 39 bars. A bar is a minute in this case, right? We're on the one minute time frame. And yeah, it's 1.21% uh, increase, all right? That is the basics of TradingView. Um, this is a really powerful platform, guys, and it's free. So even if you're not executing on TradingView, I recommend that you guys make a TradingView account tonight. It's free. Um, put your put your email in, make a TradingView, or log in with Facebook, I don't care. Make your watch list in TradingView. Um, I'll try and make a bunch of videos. Uh, I'll try and switch off, guys, because I know a lot of you guys aren't in the U.S., so I know it's going to... Uh, I know it's going to be tough if I only keep making videos in TD Ameritrade. But yeah, guys, uh, great platform, especially if you're not in the U.S. and you don't have access to, to Thinkorswim. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.